So Alhamdulillah we have brother Billy with us and uh, he is your brother and all the brothers here when you see Billy he is your brother take care of him and make sure he doesn't complain about anything. Khair inshaAllah. So Alhamdulillah today being uh, a a day of uh, Wilada of Imam Al-Askari alayhi salam we want to discuss few things here. Uh, number one, we need to look at the life of uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Yaqub al kulaini And uh, number two, to connect this with the wilada of Imam Hassan al Askari, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi wa salam. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على محمد وآل محمد صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد محمد بن يعقوب الكليني how many of us know about him محمد son of يعقوب son of ال no from كلين كلين Anyway, Muhammad bin Yaqub al Kulaini, in Arabic, Muhammad bin Yaqub in the middle, he is known as Abu <coughs> Ja'far, Muhammad bin Yaqub bin Ishaq al Razi. He was born in the year 255 AH. The year 255 AH tells you about what? The Wilad of Imam Mahdi. Oh, he was born 250 AH, and it was. Uh, 320. Uh, uh, he he was born 255 and he died 329, or 250 and he died 329. In English calendar, he was born in the year 869 or 864, and he died 941 or 940. He was a Persian Shia hadith collector scholar of high caliber kitab al kafi have you come across the book kafi yes. muhammad <coughs> bin yaqub al kulaini is the author the author of the book which is known as al kafi he was among the greatest shia hadith scholars and the author of al kafi the most famous shia hadith collection and one of the four books he was born after the martyrdom of Imam al Askari. Today we are celebrating the Wilad of Imam Askari. Sheikh al Kulaini was born after the death of Imam al Askari, so 255, according to the information. We said here he was uh, from Persia. Persia means Iran. Some of our famous scholars were born in Iran. And these scholars, even though they were Iranians, but they were fine scholars in Arabic language, in grammar, and so on and so forth. We mentioned this point one time, and I would like to repeat again. You being non-Arab, it doesn't mean that you may not know Islam properly. Islam is not for Arabs only. Islam for Muslims. Any person, like Brother Billy now, he has accepted Islam, he can be a good Muslim, better Muslim than many other Muslims who are born in Islam. When you choose Islam to be as your religion, you will be different compared to the person who was born as a Muslim and he did not choose Islam as his religion. And it is here some scholars say there are two types of Muslims. A Muslim by chance, and a Muslim by choice. If you are a Muslim by chance, it means you are born as a Muslim. You take Islam for granted. My mom, my dad, my grandma, my grandmother were Muslims, and I'm a Muslim. You are not a good Muslim. A Muslim by choice is the best Muslim. 
Why? Because he chose Islam to be his religion. And it is because of this, many Arabs, there was a time, they were in that stagnation period. They thought because we are Arabs, we were born as Arabs, our fathers, mothers are Muslims, we don't need to study. When they stopped studying, they lagged behind. These scholars like Sheikh al kulaini who was not an Arab, he was a Persian, but because he decided to become a Muslim by choice, he became a better Muslim. Coming to Shia, there are many sisters, there are many brothers who are Shia by birth, but they are not Shias by choice. You can be born in a family of Shias, but if you don't study your Shiaism, you are not a good Shia. For you to be a good Shia, you need to study your Shiaism properly. And that's why we see, we see Sheikh Kulaini, a Persian Shia today, all the Sunni, the, the Sunni Shia, Arabs, non-Arabs, they mention him as a great scholar of Hadith. Why? Because he decided to choose this subject to be his. He was among the greatest Shia Hadith scholars, as we have mentioned, and he was born after the martyrdom of Imam Hassan al-Askari, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. He met some transmitters who directly had heard hadith from Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam and Imam al-Askari alayhi salam. His father Yaqub bin Ishaq was among the scholars of his time and lived during the age of minor <coughs> occultation. He lived at that time of minor occultation. <coughs> now, his time and place of birth, many biographers have considered it certain that he was born in Kulain. Kulain is a village in Ray. Ray is Iran. Ray. What do we remember about Ray? When Omar bin Saad, Governorship, Omar bin Saad was called by Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And Imam alayhi salam said, come, come with me. Come, join our camp. He said, no, 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 I don't want. Why? He said, because they promised me Ubaidillah bin Ziyad and that camp have pray, promised me I will be the leader of Ray. I will be the king of Ray. Ray today we call it Tehran. Imam Hussein alayhi salam said, no, you will not get Ray if you are going to kill me. Come with me, if you die you are going to Jannah, paradise. But unfortunately because he wanted this dunya, he decided and he said, I will kill Imam Hussein and I will repent within two years. I will kill him and then I will repent within two years. And I will go to paradise. Can you kill a mu'min? And then you say I will do repentance? So Umar bin Saad also was killed and he did not become a king of Ray. Sheikh Kuleni was born in a village near Ray. About the time of his birth, some historical evidences show that he was born before or shortly after the birth of Imam al-Mahdi around 255, 869 and lived in the age of minor occultation. 255. How many surahs we have in the Holy Quran? 100 and? Yeah. Surah Baqarah is surah number what? Two. Surah number one? Fatiha. Number two, Surah Baqarah, it has got Ayah 255. Ayah 255 is the very famous Ayah. What do we call that Ayah? MashaAllah. Ayatul Kursi is in Surah Baqarah, Surah number two. So what is Surah number three? Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. Number ten. Brothers, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Thank you, Brother Jerome. I can hear sisters. I see that. Brother Bakir, sisters are answering, isn't it? Yeah. Can we start again, please? Number one. Surah number one. Fatiha. Number two. Bakara. Number three. Ali Ibrahim. Number four. An Nisa. 
Number five. Ma'ida. Number six. Al-An'am. Number seven. Al-A'raf. Number eight. Anfal. Number nine. Tawbah. Number ten. Yunus. How many surahs we said we're going to mention today? Twenty-five. And we are still struggling in ten. No struggle if you use the phone. No. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. This is a typical example of any place we go when we ask this question. Brother Farah Tabas, next time we, we confiscate your phone. Yeah. So, 15, surah number 15, we said is surah number, surah 15 is surah? Al-Hijr. Al 20. Taha. 25. Furqan, Faratabas, <laughs> Furqan. So inshallah brothers, if we are here, inshallah in our next session with you, we need to know all up to surah number 25, sequential, number 1, 2, 3, up to 25. Inshallah. We need to know the names, inshallah. inshallah. If we promise, sallallahu Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Oh. Allahumma sallallahu Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Oh. Titles of Sheikh Kulaini. He was his name is Muhammad bin Yaqub. Ibn Ishaq, so he's Muhammad, son of Yaqub, son of Ishaq. He was known as Abu Ja'far, Fiqatul Islam. Fiqatul Islam, reliable in the religion of Islam. You know, sometimes you hear the title, Hujjatul Islam. Yeah, Hujjatul Islam wal Muslimin. He was known as Fiqatul Islam. Fiqa is a, re a reliable person. When you meet with a thika, he will never mislead you. He will not never give you a misinformation. And he was known as Al-Baghdadi, meaning he grew up in Baghdad. Fikatul Islam. Why was he called Fikatul Islam? He was the first Islamic scholar who was called Fikatul Islam due to his god weariness, due to his knowledge, due to his merits. People refer to him for solving their religious questions and receiving rulings. You want to know Masail of Islam? You go to Fika Tul Islam. Fika reliable. Other people are not reliable. See what's happening now in Iraq? It's because there are many people who are not reliable. We went for Arba'in in Iraq. Masha Allah, Arba'in, Iraq is different. People are so generous, kind, they serve you, they welcome you. After Arba'in, most of the people or some of the people who are in Arba'in are the same people who are demonstrating now against the government is fine. Maybe there are issues, no problem. But they are the same people who are going to burn people's properties. They are not thicker. Do you know, brothers, recently, these rioters were planning to kill Sayyid Sistani. They were planning to kill. Can you imagine someone is planning to kill Sayyid Sistani? The Marja and other Shia scholars. Why? Because there is fitna, some enemies of Islam know. If you can kill the scholars, then you can be able to control the Ummah easily. So they were targeting our scholars. And the information which is coming from people is not reliable. So we need most of the time to have people who are known as Fiqatul Islam. When you talk to them, they give you the right information. Today, we have a lot of <laughs> gadgets, easy to access information. But what we access from these gadgets is not Fiqa. It's not reliable. So you do need to go to scholars in order for them to give you right information. Talking about hadith. Al-Kulaini decided to compile hadith. He learned hadith studies under Abu Hassan Muhammad bin Asad al-Kufi who lived in Ray. He then moved to Qum to perfect his hadith studies. He met hadith scholars who had heard hadith directly from Imam al-Hadi and Imam al-Askar and benefited from great teachers. Do we need hadith? Yes, we do. What is hadith? Hadith is a saying. What Imam says. First of all, hadith is a word which was said by Rasulullah. 
Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Hadith is a word saying of Imam Amirul Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Hadith is the word of Zahra sallallahu alaihi wa alayha. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And other a'imma alayhi wa sallam. Quran don't even think about saying we have Quran is enough. Don't say that. Quran, yes, is a complete book. It's not enough because Quran, you need translation of Quran. And translation of the Holy Quran, you need hadith to explain to you about the Holy Quran. And that's why the Holy Prophet says, I live amongst you too precious things. If you hold on these two together, you will never go astray. One is the book of Allah and number two, my Ahlul Bayt. Ahlul Bayt physically, when they were there, people used to go to them. When Ahlul Bayt are not there, their wordings are hadith. So we take hadith from them. And that's why I said last week, each and every one of us, we need to know at least few hadith. If you can memorize 40, that's good. But you need to know few. Don't remain without any hadith with you. Al Kulaini went to Baghdad, which was among the greatest great scientific centers after he finished writing Al Kafi in the year 327, two years before he passed away. Allahu Akbar. Some people are gifted. Can you imagine today we depend on Al Kafi? The author put a lot of effort in his life to collect hadith from different people to put them in one book. You complete, you edit, two years you die. Many people have died without completing their work. He was gifted to complete the work before he passed away. His works, although Sheikh Al Kulaini is most famous for Al Kafi, this great work was not his only accomplishment. The following is a list of his known works. For example, he has written a book which is known as Rasail Al Aimma. Rasail al aima the letters of Imams. Kitab al Rijal, the book of narrators of Hadith. Kitab al Raddu ala al Karamitwa, the book in refuting the people who are known as Karamitwa, Karamations. These people, Karamitwas, they are people in this dunya, you don't know what do they think. There was a time these people, Karamitwa, they decided to go to Makkah. They wanted to take a lot of properties from Makkah. They did not manage. You know what they managed to do? They stole a black stone, Hajarul Aswad, from Al Kaaba. Sometimes you wonder, people, what do they think? I think I watched a movie, movie this for children, yeah? I don't know what's the name of the movie. Maybe you can help me. Some, someone was thinking to steal a moon. What's that movie was on? He was planning to steal the moon. Despicable me. Even the name is bad. <laughs> That's the name of the movie. Huh? They stole black stone from Al Kaaba and they kept it for two years. Until another group of people came, they fought with them, they took the black stone back to Al Kaaba. Sheikh Al Kuleni wrote a book to refute their ideology. Kitab Maqila fi al Aimma min al Shair. He wrote another book about poems, poems which have been written on Aimma alayhi wasalam. Kitab Kitab Ta'abir al Ruya, the book on translation of interpretations of our dreams when we see our dreams dreams have got meanings we may not know the meaning to see a dream is good not to see a dream is not good to see a dream even if it's nightmare is good to see a dream which is good is good to see a dream which is bad is good not to see a dream is not good what did i say <laughs> to see a dream is good even if to see a dream which is bad is good and to see a dream which is good is good does it make sense yes, yes. if you don't see dream is not good 
And that's why our scholars say when you go to sleep, try to perform wudu. Because when we sleep, there is a window between us and information. Sometimes we cannot access information until we are pure. So we need purity in terms of wudu. Ah, it's cold, the water is cold, I can't perform wudu. It's good for you. Do wudu, go sleep. And not only that, recite Ayatul Kursi before you sleep. It's good, protects you, gives you chance to see another world. When you see a bad dream, ask people, what does it mean? I saw a black snake biting me. What does it mean? Hasad. There's a bad person follows you. You don't know. So be aware at your place of work, neighbors, college, and so on and so forth. I don't want to see this dream, but this dream it is explaining something about you. I saw my mom and dad, or I saw someone who passed away and he was crying. The dream is good. You have forgotten them. Do majlis for them. Do something good for them. But he was crying. Yes, the dream is good. But because you have forgotten them. I saw a dream and I was in a banquet and I was eating nice food and so on and so forth. Yeah, maybe the dream is good, maybe it's bad. I don't know. Sheikh Kulaini wrote a book, Kitab Ta'abir Rubia. Yeah. Why? Surah Yusuf. Yusuf alayhi salam, prophet of Allah is in prison. He enters prison with two people. They saw a dream. One of them saw a dream that he was serving alcohol. And another one saw a dream, birds are eating like bread on his head. They came to him and they said, we don't know the meaning of these dreams. Yusuf was gifted. He said the meaning, there is a meaning. You who are serving the alcohol, you will be freed. They will take you out of prison. You will go and work with a king. When you go there, remember me, don't forget me. He said, okay. And you, sorry fellow, you birds are eating bread on your head. You will be killed. And your body will be thrown away. And actually the birds will eat from your body. And this is actually what happened. To see a bad dream is good even though that bad dream is bad. And to see a good dream is good. But we need channels. Sheikh Kulain is writing a book. Here in London, we have Ayatollah Said Fadil Milan, our teacher. He is good in interpretation of dreams. The problem is how to get in touch with him because he's so busy. However, you may find other Maulanas, they know this, and there are many books which have been written. Another book, Kitab Riyadh, the book of biographies of narrators of Hadith. Another book, Azi Wa Tajamul. Clothing. Which clothing can you wear? Which one is nice? Which color is better? And so on and so forth. He has written that book. Recently in Africa, someone attacked Shears. And he said, you Shears, you are wearing black clothing when you commemorate the martyrdom of Imam Hussein. This is bad. Imam Ali says, don't wear it. And many people are like, oh, so Shias are wearing black things and it's not good. Imam Ali said it's not good. But scholars have done a lot of research, including that book. It says for you to wear black clothing, making it as, as it is wajib, it is not wajib. You are doing bid'ah and bid'ah is not good. However, to wear black clothing for the sake of showing sorrow, grief to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and you honor that day is Mustahab. You have that book, Zai wa Tajammud. Another book, Ad-Dawajin wa Rawajin. And another book, Al-Wasail. And another book, Fadl al-Quran, the merits of Quran. We need to go to the Holy Quran. His teachers up to 50. Kuleni have been mentioned, who educated and taught him, as well as narrating hadith for him. His most influential teacher was Ali bin Ibrahim al-Kummi. Kummi from where? Kum. Author of Tafsir al-Kummi. Tafsir al-Kummi. Kulaini studied from him. 
He has been mentioned in, in the chain of transmitters of more than 7,068 hadith in Al-Kafi. More than 7,000 hadith has been mentioned in Al-Kafi. Question, are these hadith, all of them, authentic? The answer is no. Sheikh Kuleni, why did you narrate hadith? You mentioned hadith in your book which are not authentic. He said, my duty was to go to people who narrated hadith. For example, now we are in year 2019 in London. You want to write the biography, you want to write the life of Muslims in UK. You go to Abdul Rauf, you say, Abdul Rauf, tell me about the centers in London. Abdul Rauf says there are many centers. How many? He says maybe there are 50. You go to Tawahir, you ask him. He says maybe there are 75. My work is just to na narrate what Abdul Rauf said, what Tawahir said. I don't have time to recheck this, in, the, this information. This is exactly what Sheikh Al Kuleni did. So now the problem comes here. Non Shias, when they want to attack Shias, they go to Kitab al Kafi, they bring the book, and these days they read. They open any hadith, and they, then they come to you and say, You Shia, you say such and such. But look, Kuleni, what does he say? If I don't have this background information, I'm knockout. I say, oh, uh, I don't have any answer. But if you know that what Sheikh Kuleni did, he didn't say, my book is the most authentic book after Quran. He didn't say that. He did not claim that. He said, my work is just to collect hadith information, put it there, it's so your work to go and verify whether the hadith are correct or not. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli alayhi wa sallam. We said Sheikh Kuleni lived in the year when Imam al Askari passed away. So now we look at the life of Imam Hassan al Imam Hassan al Askari. He was born in Medina. In which year? 260. We said Kuleni either, either 250 or 55 or 260, according to some people. Imam Hassan al Askar alayhi salam died as a martyr in Samarra in the year 232 AH. No, 262. So, do, ah, he lived for how many years? So, we need to correct there. He lived for how many years? 282. 288. Thank you. So if he lived for 28 years, he was born in the year 260 and he died in Samara 280. Uh huh. Imam Mahdi was born in I made a mistake here. Imam Mahdi was born in the year 255 and he lived with his father for how many? So is it correct? 15. This is Imam al Askari. Askari Imam al Askari passed away. Okay. So he was born. He passed away in 260. So we need to say 232. Born. 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 Yeah. And he died in the year 2? Alhamdulillah. Sallallahu Muhammad wa al-Muhammad. Allah. Have we engaged the, <coughs> the audience? And Imam lived for how many years? Thank you. Now, he is known as Az-Zaki. Imam Hassan al Askar is known as? What's the meaning of Zaki? Pure. Pure. He is known as Naki. Naki. Pure, clean. He is known as Al Askari. Why? Garrison, camp of soldiers, because he lived in Samarra. These titles are good, very good for Imam. Are we Zaki? Are we Naki? Are we pure? Are we clean in our thoughts and minds and heart? and body, physical, spiritual. When we mention their names, we should be Zaki and Naki because we are the Imam of the people who follow Imam Zaki and Naki.
He was the father of Imam of our time, Al Hujjah ibn Al Hassan Al Mahdi, Ajjal Allah. The mother, his mother was Susan or Susan, Susan. <laughs> Story. A Christian scholar accepted Islam at his hand. Christian scholar. When this Christian scholar was asked, why have you accepted Islam? What did he say? He said, Ra'ay tu fihi sifat al Masih. I saw in him, in Imam al Askari, the merits of Jesus. I saw the merits of Jesus. You know, Allah, sometimes you meet with people who attract you. You, you don't know what's happening. You just fall in love with whatever they do and whatever they say. Our A'imma alayhi musalam wa like that. This is a Christian. He said, when I met with Imam al-Askari, I saw like him is like a Jesus. And a Christian, when he says, I saw him like a Jesus, it means a lot. Abu Hanifa. He said, I studied under Imam Muhammad al-Baqir and al-Sadiq. Allahumma sallam Muhammad wa Muhammad. I was ignorant until I met them. The nur of Nabi Muhammad, I met the nur through Imam Bakir and Sadiq alayhi salam. If a Christian can see the nur, why then we miss to see it? We need to be zaki and naki in order for us to see that. The story of Hussein, a drunker. The story says at the time of Imam alayhi salam al Askari, before. There was a person by the name Hussein. What is his name? Unfortunately, he was drunker. Sharadi. Yeah? He drinks alcohol. One day, this Hussein, something came into his mind. And he said, I want to repent. It's too much. I've drunk a lot and I don't even enjoy that. Now, I want to change. Sometimes people have those moments. So he visited Wakil of Imam al Askari. Wakil means agent, ambassador. He went to him and he said, I want to talk to you. This Wakil refused. And he said, No, no, no. You are Sharabi, you are a drunker. Go away. I don't want to sit with you. What would you do if a Sharabi person comes to you? Would you sit down and talk to him? He went. The news went to Imam al-Askari alayhi salam. Imam al-Askari was visited at one time for Hajj by his wakil, agent, his ambassador. Imam alayhi salam refused to meet with his wakil. And he said, I'm sorry, close the door, I'm, I don't have time to meet with him. And this wakil, agent, imagine you ambassador of Imam. Then he said, oh Imam, why you refuse me to meet with you? He said, because you refuse to meet with Hussein. He said, but Hussein was drunker. He said, yes, if you thought you are going to guide through your attitude, you lost him. That's a lesson. Your attitude made Hussein to run away. How many times people come, they want to ask for forgiveness, and you say, no, Wallahi, I'll talk to you until the day of I die. And when I'm, I'm dead, even don't come to my janazah. Yeah, sometimes we say that. Imam alayhi salam is telling us a lesson. If you want to guide people to give them another chance, allow them to come to you. One day, the time of Imam al-Ridwa, salawatullah alayhi wa salam. You have had the story of uh, Al-Hafi. Al-Hafi, uh, barefooted, came to Imam al-Ridha alayhi salam. No, he didn't come. Imam al -Ridha was passing by his house outside. And he had big, loud music. And he was like, Imam alayhi salam was asking, this area is the area of Muslims. How can I hear this loud music? All of a sudden, a servant, a woman came to throw rubbish. You know, back home, we don't have like what we have here. What do you do with your rubbish? From the window. Yeah? 
But at least this woman came to throw the rubbish outside. Imam Riba alayhi salam saw the lady and Imam asked, Is this house belongs to a free born person or is it belongs to a slave? The lady looks at this man, he doesn't know that he was Imam. He said, No, he's a free person, he's not a slave. Imam alayhi salam said, Yes. He is a free person. If he was a slave, he wouldn't behave the way he's behaving. The discussion took a bit longer. You know, you know some people, bosses yeah, of companies and people, when you delay for two minutes, they ask, where were you? What are you happening? What are you doing? And so on and so forth. So this lady went back. The boss said, why did you delay today? She said, I met with this man. He looks to be very holy. And he asked me whether this house belongs to a slave or free bonded person. And I said the house belongs to a free person. And the person, I mean Imam, Imam said, indeed, he, if he was a slave, he wouldn't behave the way he's behaving. This man, it struck him that, oh, this is what he said. He understood the meaning. He came out searching for Imam. Because he was in hurry, he didn't put on his shoes. He came out barefooted. And that's why he is known as Al-Hafi. And he ran towards the Imam. And when he found him, he said, Sorry, sir, you said something which made me to think. Why did you say that? Can you explain? Imam alayhi salam said, If you are a free person, you can commit any ma'asiyah, any guna you want. But if you are a slave of Allah, you will always want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, wow, this is good. Can I follow you so that I can be your student? Imam said, yes, follow me. From that time, he left committing ma'asiyah. Now, I think if Imam alayhi salam would say, no, 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 I don't want to speak to you because you are asi, gunahegan in Pharisees, is they say, you are committing sin. I don't want, go away. This would happen. Hussein, the drunker, visited Wakil of Imam alayhi salam. The Wakil refused to talk to him. When Hussein, the Wakil met with Imam al-Askari, he refused to talk to him because he wanted to teach him a lesson. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another person, Ishaq al-Kindi. Said al-Kindi. Ishaq al-Kindi, the philosopher, met Imam al-Askari to challenge him on the contradictions of Quran. Allah. There are people who you don't know what is in their mind. This guy is Haq al-Kindi. He wrote a book, Muswadda. And he wanted to publish this book on the contradictions of Quran. What did he say? There are contradictions on the Holy Quran. And I want to prove Quran is not the word of Allah. He compiled the book. If a thesis or PhD, this is a very wrong one for you even to publish. So he was talking to Imam. Imam asked him, what did you find in your research? He said, I found that the meanings of the Holy Quran do not make sense to me. Imam asked him a question. What you find is, is it this muraduhu or muraduka? Is this your opinion or his opinion? If the opinion doesn't make sense, is this your opinion or opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ishaq al-Kindi said, no, Quran is Allah's book. He said, so it's your problem, you don't understand his murad. You don't understand his tafsir and translation and interpretation. You need to learn and ask, what does it mean? Don't just refuse Quran and say there are contradictions here. This is our problem. Ishaq al-Kindi is an example of many of us. When we read Quran, we say it doesn't make sense. So I don't, I'm not going to apply this. Why? Because I did not understand properly. You don't want to say I don't understand. You say it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to you because this is not your work. This is not your word. This is Allah's word. He used Arabic language to explain key principles. The Arabic language we don't understand. How can we understand the principles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is here when we celebrate the wilada of Imam alayhi salam, we need to remember 
that there are many lessons which we need to learn from him. One lesson. Imam alayhi salam says, when you see a small sin, guna, and you belittle it, you say, ah, this is just a small one. That acting or action of you looking at a guna as is a small, that is a big sin. How many sometimes we sleep in the morning? And you say, ah, no problem, I will wake up after sun, sunrise and I will play. I will pray my fajr. Ah, this is easy, this is small. That's a big sin. Why? Because, because you are looking at his, it as if it's small. Don't look as sighar al as Imam Amir al muminin Ali bin Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Don't look at small or big because the sin is small I can commit no look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are violating his rights may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask him sincerely when we celebrate the wilad of Imam al-Askar alayhi salam we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us go for his ziyara and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us his shafa'a we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in knowledge we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us insha'Allah be barakat the teachings of a'imma and some of these are in kitab al-kafi ya Allah make us memorize hadith make us be able to understand the ahadith from ma'asumina alayhi salam Ya Allah, there are many people who have asked us to pray for them, especially those who are organizing the Fatiha to, tonight. They have given me the names of their marhumin from our sister, his uh, family, and all the marhumin. Ya Allah, make them enter your mercy and rahma, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Allahumma fill the mu'minina wal mu'minat, wal muslimina wal muslimat. برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله اكذب حوائج المؤمنين والمؤمنات يا الله we ask you to fulfill the hajat of all the brothers and sisters who are here يا الله we ask you to cure all the مريض those brothers and sisters who are not well يا الله cure them بشفاعة الإمام العسكر عليه السلام يا الله we ask you to protect this أمة protect our children يا الله remove the fitna in Iraq so that our the Haram of A'imma alayhi musalam should be kept safe and our scholars there, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta sami'u al-alim wa tuba alayna inna kanta tawabu al-rahim. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin. Allah. Ali Muhammad. Just for one or two minutes, if there's any question regarding what I have said, maybe it's not clear, please feel free to ask. Now, Ustaz Abdusam. Amongst the works that Sheikh Al Kuleni did was one was he compiled Al Kafi and he also wrote a book on El Mujahid. Now, I thought this, I mean, his knowledge of the people who are authentic or was strong because he did write this. <coughs> Why did he leave this? Uh, did he make comments on what he wrote based on this? No. Sheikh Hulaini, if you look at his Al-Kafi in the introduction, he said, a pious person has asked me to write a book on the Hadith. Keeping in your mind that at that time we didn't have a book, a compilation of Hadith like Kitab Al-Kafi, <coughs> because people were meeting with Aima alayhi salam. Their agents are there, wakil. So it was easy for people to meet. And that's why when you do, for example, hadith studies, science of hadith studies, it says that Ahl Sunnah, they wrote the books of hadith uh, before Shias, compiling the books, books before Shias. Why? The, the reason is they are, whatever you call, they, they didn't have a imma like what Shia have. So Shia took for granted our imma here, so we will ask any question. But at the, the time of Kulaini, he saw that now Imam alayhi salam is in occultation, we don't have such a book, let me compile. What he did is compilation. He did, he did not authenticate them. Maybe that was a work to be done later on. It's like when you write any book, you say, let me write, and then I will either edit it, and proofread it or maybe we'll give it to someone else to do that.
But life is not like that. Sometimes you pass away. That's number one. Number two, maybe he visited most of the people who are authentic. And he wanted to get their information of a hadith from them. So what he thought, okay, because he's authentic, let me collect first. And then I will do verifications later. But being a person, being not a masoom, we are prone to make mistakes. And sometimes there are many other factors which can influence whatever you write, you think it's correct, and then it may not be there. However, number three, which is very important. In Surah Al-Hujurat, Surah number 49, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In ja'akum fasikun binaba'in fatabayyan. If an evildoer comes to you, brings you information, evildoer, verify that. The opposite of it is what? If a trustworthy person brings you information, what should you do? Take it. So we are dealing with one another on the basis of trusting one another. You are telling me that the door is closed? I believe you. I say, okay, the door is closed. But if you are an evil person, you have lied many times, I would say, no, let me go and check. The way we are dealing with one another is on the basis of trust until it proves otherwise. So that could be another reason why he said, let me collect these ones and then people will come and do that. Now, alhamdulillah, we have many scholars who have written the commentaries of uh, Al-Kafi and uh, they have made a lot of efforts to say these are hadith are not authentic, this one is not, this one is okay, this one we need to look at it again and again. Keeping in mind that Imam Amir al muminin Ali bin Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam has said that people are of four categories. The people who bring hadith are of four. Number one, the one who is trustworthy. He gives you hadith, he gives you information, you don't doubt it. Take from him. Another one, he is trustworthy, but he has forgotten some information. He doesn't lie. But he comes, he says, I've forgotten here, or he mixes the information because of old age, because of diseases, sicknesses, and so on and so forth. The third one is the one who, when the hadith was said, he, uh, he had only one part, but he didn't have the other part. Another one is a liar. He comes, he lies. Yeah, left, right, and center. This is the one we need to be careful with. Sheikh Kuleini was dealing with the people who are normal, maybe he thought that I can collect from them, no problem at all. But eventually, other scholars came and said, no, not everything is correct. And a principle from Mother of Alul Bayt, there is no book which is authentic 100% after the Holy Quran. It's only the Holy Quran. Any other book, you need to look at it closely. Any other question? Khair, inshallah. Thank you very much, inshallah. We will meet uh, in other series next time. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all. Bi barakati salat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Can I request that uh, Brother Essen Kazmi uh, his father passed away and he requests to read Surah Fatiha for his marhum and all our marhumin. Inshallah, Brother Essen Kazmi, Surah Fatiha for his marhumin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إذن الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يقل له أحد. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات 
إنك على كل شيء قدير وصلى الله على محمد وآل محمد الله سلم محمد. Sorry brothers, I've received a request from a sister who is in need and unfortunately I can't give you the name because of privacy issues. But she is in need and she is asking for your assistance. I know Brother Farah Tabas always does that. And we are looking to raise 250 pounds for this sister. Anyone who wants to contribute, please do so. Now, please, if you don't mind. Today and tomorrow for Juma also will be there, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah reward you. Bi barakati salat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Yes, Suleiman. I have a question, but it's not a thing. Okay. Basically, um, I was just on YouTube and um, I see some uh, Shias, they were hitting themselves with a um, knife basically on their backs. Yeah. And basically, I was just wondering is that. Please, like, brothers, kindly donate possible? generously. Barakallah. Okay. You wonder whether that is permissible or not permissible? Yeah, according to uh, rulings, uh, Islam first and foremost says do not cause any harm to yourself. So any causing harm to your body, bodily harm is not allowed in Islam. What if I hit myself and I don't cause any harm? That's another discussion. However, most of our scholars have not allowed such an act to be done. But people have chosen to do it. So if people do, and then others say, well, these are Shias, look at the Shias the way they do, we say, no, why don't you show others, other Shias who don't do that? So unfortunately they don't mention the other view, they just give you, they, they generalize the issues to say this is what Shias do, unfortunately. Say it inshallah. Yeah. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله من أول الدنيا إلى فنائها ومن الآخر إلى بقائها والحمد لله على كل نعمة واستغفر الله من كل ذنب وعتوب يا أرحم الراحمين صل على محمد السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا نبي الله السلام عليك يا محمد بن عبد الله السلام عليك يا خاتم النبيين سيد المرسلين السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب وسير رسول الله وخليفة تهم إلى الفاس السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا خديجة الكبرى أم المؤمنين السلام عليك يا أم البنين سلام الله عليها السلام عليك يا حسن المجتمع سيدة شباب أهل الجنة السلام عليك يا عبد الله الحسين شهيد بك البلاء وعلى الأرواح التي هلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت بقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله الآخر لحد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين خصوصا سيدي ومولاي أخيك من فضل الأباس بن أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا أختك زينة وأختك أم كلثوم وبنتك سكينة وفاطمة صغرى صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المحدي الإمام المنتظر صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين أجل الله تعالى فرجك وسعن الله تعالى مخرجك وزهورك ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل وليك الحجة بن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى مائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا